How's it going, everyone and everybody? This is Luxley, and I'm here to talk about dragons today. Why dragons? Well, you know, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, and I am absolutely hypnotized and intoxicated by the dragons in the show. I have a few of my characters in WoW named after dragons. I think dragons are my favorite, favorite animal of all time that doesn't exist. And I was just poking around with the lore, and I started looking into black dragons, and I thought... I'd give my spin on it, my interpretation on who the black dragon aspects are in World of Warcraft. I'm going to talk about the black dragonflight. This is a golf club you do not want to be a part of. You do not want to be a part of these dudes. They are pretty damn crazy. Though the black dragonflight was nearly annihilated in ages past, a few of the evil creatures have made their homes in the dry, desolate wastes of the barrens. Of all the freaking places to live, they choose the barons. I don't think they choose better real estate, but maybe they're into that like buy low, sell high kind of thing. But instead, they go ghetto and they go barons. Okay, whatever. With their lord, Deathwing, either dead or missing, the black dragons seek to appease only themselves. In other words, they're selfish bastards, or they like to jerk off a lot. I don't know which it is. If they like to jerk off a lot, I could recommend some good porn sites, but... I don't know of any dragon porn sites, so if you guys know dragon porn out there, please leave it in the comments. The creatures are immensely powerful and cruel and revel in mortal suffering. <laughs> Let me tell you, they have not met any of my ex-girlfriends. You want to talk about mortal suffering, cruelty, etc., etc., just pick any one of my, one of my ex-girlfriends. They, they just have no idea what you're talking about. The black dragons are the enemies of every other dragon flight, especially the great red dragons of Lordaeron. I get that. These guys probably don't play well with others. And kindergarten, under the category, plays well with others, probably got a very bad grade. No doubt in my mind. Now, the member types. The black dragon flight includes the black dragons themselves, as well as other black dragonkins, such as dragon spawn or draconids. You have black worms, you have black dragons, black drakes, black whelp, black dragonspawn, and black draconid. Do you see the common link here? <laughs> There's a lot of darkness and black and evil going on here. This, these guys, you know, you can get the idea, like, under the list of favorite color, black. You just know that's what it is. Now I'm going to talk about the culture because I find this rather fascinating. The black dragons are large creatures that are carnivorous. In other words, if they go to Peter Luger's great steakhouse here in New York, they're not ordering a salad and spinach. You got it? Good. Okay. They spend their time hunting as well as watching the various wars around the world. Now, if they like to watch wars, I could recommend a few good war movies. So grab a pen. Saving Private Ryan, probably one of the best war movies ever. Spin the clock back into the 80s. Even... Platoon is a pretty damn, with Charlie Sheen, great, great war movie. So I recommend Netflix, those two films. Tell me some of your favorite war movies out there. Uh, they can often be found torturing prisoners, animals, or anything else unfortunate enough to fall into their care. Now, I can picture Joffrey from Game of Thrones, you know, being in this clan somehow. You know, just bored out of his mind picking wings off of fly butterflies or something silly like that. You know, they just are into that crazy stuff. Uh, the aspect of the Dragonflight Deathwing, in other words, the big boss, is one of the fiercest and most evil creatures in existence. <laughs> Guys, you have not met my ex-girlfriends. I'm telling you. Anyway, in his life, he has destroyed many ancient cities. And in his middle age, he kind of screwed the pooch trying to blow up Stormwind. He just kind of got pissed off, came in, destroyed like about a third of Stormwind, and then had to, a plane to catch, which I suddenly realized makes no sense because he's a dragon. A, he can't fit on a plane. B, he doesn't need a plane because he knows how to fly. So we'll just forget about my silly analogies for the moment. Now, Deathwing, as I said, is one of the most fiercest and most evil creatures in existence in his lifetime. Uh, Deathwing often makes deals with the intelligent races, trading members of his dragon flight for slaves and humanoid torture subjects. See, when I was a kid, I traded baseball cards, and you know, this guy's trading his buddies into slavery or his children into slavery. That's nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. Male black dragons' names may sometimes end with an on, 
And females end with aya or ia. Often they are based on words synonymous with the color black. Yeah, we get the black theme. We got that down, guys. Darkness, fire, or modifications of words usually used to describe an undesirable character trait. Now I'm going to talk about the society of these uh, black dragons. Uh, very interesting place to be. Black dragons were once earth waters. So, in other words, if you're a mommy and daddy black dragon, you want your kids to be earth waters. My parents wanted me to be a lawyer. Maybe your parents wanted you to be a doctor. These guys wanted to be earth waters. Caring, oh, I didn't know what an earth water is, but now I'm going to find out. Caring for stone and mountain using formidable abilities to cause the rise and fall of terrain. In other words, they're real estate developers, okay? They were to watch as the world of Azeroth changed and to maintain the boundaries and the lines of delineation between the races so that no one would fall to war over land. Talk about taking a nap on the job. <laughs> they really did. These guys just probably had narcolepsy and fell asleep at the wheel, man. They maintained this purpose for a long time, living in relative harmony. Yeah, uh-huh. Relative harmony with other races and shaping the land to better use. Like I said, they were real estate developers, although you can't find a mall anywhere in World of Warcraft, really. In those peaceful times, their leader was known as Neltharion, and his wisdom and power were renowned. Then came the madness that destroyed Neltharion's mind. As the Black Dragonflight followed their leader into madness, so did their powers. See, that's something I usually do. Like when I see someone going insane, I was like, let me follow him and see where it goes. Let me follow insanity along the path and just, just out of curiosity to see where it goes. Yeah, I'll follow him. He lowered mountains and destroyed lands so that the races would mingle and fight over territory. Okay, you know, so in other words, he's a little bit of an instigator, you know, destroying someone's land so they can't farm the crops they can't they have no food no places no shelter so they're going to be refugees in somebody else's land creates conflict interesting they traded their powers of earth for the powers of fire and magna not a bad trade not a bad trade at all destruction was their art and death was their goal guys they did not ever meet any of my ex-girlfriends they just they have it they don't know what they're anyway all the other dragons of Azeroth have fought against Deathwing's flight at every opportunity. I could see how you want to get rid of these guys. They're just pretty nasty. In modern times, black dragons are some of the most evil, sadistic creatures known on the face of Azeroth. Ex-girlfriends, guys, I'm telling you. Black dragons are vicious, selfish beings, not caring even for the lives of their flight mates and children. Well, we get the idea now that these guys are not going to be opening a daycare center for both Jaina and Sylvanas when they fall in love, have kids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, again, uh, Sylvanas is undead and she can't have kids, so my analogy doesn't make any sense as usual. Often killing other black dragons to rise in prominence among the flight. So they'll basically kill each other to get ahead, kind of like corporate America. Interesting. Before Deathwing's disappearance, the Black Dragons sought to emulate their Dark Master. Uh, a worm's goals, in other words, a little dragon, baby dragon, his goal in life was to become the foul Black Aspect's right hand or even replace him entirely, caring little for other Blacks that got in the way of his goal. In other words, the end justifies the means. Very Machiavellian. I hit the target on the head when I say big business corporate America. Nowadays the drag black Buckley can't read. Nowadays the black dragonflight is in civil war. North versus south, blue gray, not sure who's who. With their leader missing from the black flight. He's not missing, he's dead. He's kinda dead. I I, I killed him in, in Dragon Soul, by the way. About forty two times. Each individual desires to become the new leader of their dragon kin. They're ambitious. That's a good thing. They might not take the nicest path to be ambitious, but yeah, that's a good thing. Most black dragons follow the instructions of another only if they expect a benefit or they're confident that the other dragon could eat them. <laughs> it's pretty, if you really think about that, you know, get me a beer or I shall eat you. You know, so you got to go get the beer, otherwise you're going to be dinner. Uh, the symbol of the black dragonflight is a volcano. 
as it represents the great power of the earth and elements, which kind of reminds me, gives, it gives me that idea of kind of like some shaman elements. I wonder if these guys are shaman in their spare time or if it's a hobby of theirs. Guises. In other words, what costume would the black dragonfly wear for Halloween? How would they go undercover? Very interesting stuff. The preferred humanoid forms of the black dragonfly when in disguise amongst mortals are humans. Got it. Humans with black hair and dark eyes. In other words, Morton Downey Jr. No, wait, scratch that. Robert Downey Jr. There you go. Though black dragons can easily take other forms, humans have been especially useful. The powerful and semi-industrial human kingdoms could more easily accomplish the goals of Deathwing and his ilk than the nomadic Torin. I can see that because if they were Torin, all the other black dragon flight would go refire and it's a barbecue. The magically minded high elves, you know, they don't want to be night elves or high elves, I should say, simply because the high elves think they're better than everybody else and the black dragon flight already knows they're better than everybody else. And they don't want to necessarily, or they could be the uh, mountain dwelling dwarfs, which I would always choose because, hey, that's where the best beer is. Humans are also far less sensitive to the presence of dragons in other races. Night elves, for instance, can identify a dragon with relative ease. I learned something new and something very interesting. Known black dragons that have taken human form are listed. Well, good, we're going to get a list. In their dragon state and respective human names. A few known exceptions are Lady Sinestra. Sounds almost like Nancy Sinatra. I don't know why made that correlation when acting as an ambassador to the dragon maw clan uses blood elven guys why don't she be a blood elf well i guess if she was a human they'd probably kill her so understood and black wing spellbinders and black wing lair who take on elven form but they you just told me they like to be all right forget it well well these are some of the dragons and some of their undercover humanoid guises so to speak death wing Lord Davil Prestor. Why you would choose the name Davil be is beyond me because the kids are going to make fun of you in school. That is a name that kids would just make fun of. I would not choose that name. Nefarian as Lord Victor Nefarious. Now raise your hand if you see something wrong with this or hear something wrong with this. If you're going undercover, if you're going into a guise, Picture this, you're an American spy, and you're going into Russia, and you have a fake passport. Are you going to use the last name Spy on your passport? Robert Spy. No, you're not. There's something fundamentally wrong with that. Onyxia as Lady Katrana Prestor. Interesting stuff. I started looking into the Warcraft lore, the Warcraft movie. She's the one who's responsible for all the chaos and mayhem in the Eastern Kingdoms, particularly Stormwind. And I'm surprised Blizzard hasn't really visited this character or revisited this character in a very long time. Very intriguing as a dragon and a humanoid form. Sabalian, known as Baron Sablemane. I have no clue who this guy is, and I'm sure there's a lore geek out there somewhere. Luxley, how could you not know who Baron Sablemane is? You're a nerd, you're a jerk, you don't know that. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Caloran the Deceiver as Caloran Windblade. Once again, if you're going to go undercover or go into a guise, it's a good idea not to have the same first name as your dragon form. In other words, it's better to be a little bit more covert. That's a wrap on the first episode of Lore with Lux, where I interpret World of Warcraft lore. Or in this case, more so misinterpret on purpose World of Warcraft lore. I hope you liked it. I hope you guys understand I'm just simply trying to offer a little bit of storytelling of a great story, World of Warcraft lore, with a very humorous and kind of fitted into modern day slant. I got this idea from an old, old, old comic. His name was Richard Jenny. Great, great comic. He's unfortunately no longer with us. Anytime I had the opportunity to see this guy live, I grabbed it. He was hysterical. I remember seeing him on stage for four hours the light crew the production crew is like flickering the lights it's time to go rich it's time to go rich and he was still on the stage after four hours 
entertaining people and for a comic to be on stage for four hours and be as funny as he was in the fourth hour as he was in the first hour it's pretty damn amazing he used to do this bit in one of his comedy routines where he talked about this very ordinary blue collar kind of guy on this big elaborate gourmet late night cable cooking show where the guy instead of making some elaborate dish like beef wellington is making macaroni and cheese and screwing it up it was really hysterical and that's kind of where i'm going with this whole world of warcraft lore let me know if you want to see more of these kind of videos i had a blast doing it and quite honestly i did this in one take just boom ranted it out so if you hear me stumbling on words, et cetera, et cetera, it's not exactly easy to do because as I'm reading it, I'm thinking and of ad lib things that I could say. So once again, this is Luxley saying, whatever it is by you, morning, afternoon, make it great. Boat drinks. Have a good one.